Welcome to the Hyatt Regency in Hoover, Alabama, right next to the magic city of Birmingham, Alabama, for the 2023 Gulf South Conference Football Media Day. I'm your host, James Verrett, and the Gulf South Conference is the home of champions. When you think of D2 football, first and foremost, you think of the Gulf South Conference. Today, we'll start with West Georgia Wolves, who is one of the best teams in the conference, and they're coming off of a stellar season in which offensively, they were one of the best teams in the country. We're joined by David Dean in his seventh season at West Georgia, and also we're joined by David Botten, the offensive lineman. He's a junior all conference last season. Coach, first of all, last season, it almost came down to basically two points <laughs> and you could have gotten into the playoffs. How bitter was that and how do you try to bring your team out of that and get to the playoffs this season? Well, first off, to answer the, the second part of your question, I think our guys have gotten past that. Uh, just their work ethic in the off season, the, what they've done this summer, uh, I think they're, they're on a mission to – put themselves in a position where we don't put it in the hands of anybody else, where we have an opportunity to, to make the playoffs on what we do and not rely on somebody else. Uh, but, you know, the other thing is it, it was bitter. It was it was tough. We, we uh, had two games early in the season that we lost. I think at one time we were 3-2 and two or 2-2 two and two and then ran off uh, uh, wins the rest of the season. We're probably playing our best football at the end of the year and didn't get an opportunity to showcase that uh, into the playoffs in there. You had a stellar quarterback in Harrison Frost. He is no longer there, eligibility up. How hard is it to replace him, and what players do you have that's coming in trying to replace a guy who was, I mean, over 6,000 yards <laughs> throwing in the air in two years? Well, it's always hard to replace players. You, you hate to see them leave. You wish you could have them forever. But a guy like Harrison Frost is, is very difficult. He did so many things for us made so many calls, put us in the right situations, made great decisions. But we really feel confident with the guys that we have that are stepping in there. The, the difference now in what we have is we have six quarterbacks in our program right now. Four of them are sophomores and two of them are freshmen. So we're young at that position. Uh, but uh, we feel confident with their ability and what they can do. And they're a lot like Harrison. Uh, we just got to get them to play like Harrison. All right, David, you're going to be in charge of trying to block for these young men. Last two years, less than 15 sacks total as a team. How important is it as an offensive line to make sure you guys communicate properly regardless who's back there making the call? Uh, it's our um, biggest priority for sure. Um, communication is the number one key for us five up front. Um, like you said, 15 sacks in two seasons, that's our – Number one goal is to have the least amount of sacks in the, in the conference, which we have done. And um, I think we, we're we going to try to continue to do that year after year. How do you try to improve communication? You're the guy that makes all the calls on that offensive line. How do you try to get everybody on the same page during the off season? so once the season starts, it's much easier? Um, I mean, basically just having all the guys around, like just working out together, uh, practicing together. Um, hanging out together out, outside of football, that's the that's the best way for sure. Um, but ultimately, it's just day in, day out at practice, working on our calls, working on our techniques, working on what we do just to keep refining our, our craft and keep getting better and better. Coach, it seems as though the hard work actually paid off last season. You were the statistical national champion when it comes to offensive output, over 500 yards a game. How does that make you feel as far as really reaffirming the efficiency of your offense? Well, you feel like you're bringing in the right guys to fit your system. And uh, you, I feel like that we got a really good coaching staff, and I think our, our players believe in, in what our coaches are, are teaching them and, and trying to get them. Uh, but it also means that we're doing the right things fundamental, fundamentally. We're, we're getting – uh, our guys to play the way that we want them to play, and then they're going out and executing. And I think it's just a lot of it's got to do with confidence. Early in the year, if you can if you can kind of get on a roll and start playing well, it just builds confidence over and over and over. Uh, and all that comes from and stems from is practice, you know, all through the week and carrying that confidence into a game on Saturday. Having a young quarterback, will you need your defense to sort of carry you a little bit early on until you can get – the right guy under center and also the right 
sort of flow going on your offense? Yeah, I think the defense is going to be a big key for us. We've got a lot of guys coming back uh, on the defensive side of the ball, and we got a lot of speed over there, so I feel really good about that. But I think the other thing that's going to, to go with that is is our run game. we got to be able to establish a run game. Last year we could get into a game and we could throw it all the time. Uh, and um, I think this year we're going to have to be a little bit more balanced till we can get our quarterback's – feet established and and finding out exactly how they're going to be able to handle and manage a a football game. Uh, So I think a big key for us early in the year is is definitely going to be our run game. David, when he talks about the run game, that goes up to the guys up front. How important is it for you guys to solidify that run blocking uh, assertion in order to make it easier for your running backs? Um, I mean, like Coach Dean said, we got to establish it early. So, I mean, we take we have to take pride in that, and we have to take ownership and, like, take it out of Coach Dean's hands and say, hey, Coach, we got it, you know, and just show him that we can do it and just get the ball rolling early. How difficult is it to transition from being really a pass-blocking offensive lineman to more of a run-blocking offensive lineman? Um. I mean, I wouldn't say specifically we were past. <laughs> um, Good answer. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, with our O-line coach, we we hammer everything, pass, run, ev- our whole playbook. So, we install it early. And, um, you know, we just, we just got to be physical up front, bottom line, just get it going. I hear you. Coach, when you think about last season, you missed the playoffs just really by that much. How important is it now to try to work early, get those wins early, so later on in the season the question of playoffs won't even be there? Well, the biggest thing is we can't put pressure on ourselves to try to force things to happen. Uh, if, if, if we, like I said, get that confidence – then everything kind of takes care of itself. So the big thing for us is we're not going to dwell on last year. We're going to dwell on, you know, each day getting a little bit better, getting ourselves ready for our first game, then second game, third game on the way. Uh, And then hopefully we're going to be playing like we did at the end of the year last year, playing our best football. And, you know, our first meeting, and David can tell you this, when we get to, to talking about what we're going to do, we talk about we don't have to be our best the first game we got to play well but we can't be our best we want to be the best when we get to november because that's when everything starts happening and and that's when you start making that run for what every college athlete goes to to a university for is to win a conference championship and uh, ultimately win a national championship so i think for us it's not putting the pressure on ourselves it's mm-hmm. just go out and, and perform and and have fun in what we're doing yeah, and i think that's one thing our guys do is is they have they, they enjoy being around each other it's fun to watch them practice and and mm-hmm. you know the offense and defense jarring at each other and then after practice they're walking off the field arm in arm you know so it's <laughs> it's a lot of fun to 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 go in the locker room after practice and see uh, all the camaraderie that they have on, on either side of the ball. Now, David, are you the main person that's in charge of the fun, or do they have designated <laughs> players who are the jesters of the team and also the guys who are in charge of, you know, uplifting guys after a hard day in the hot Georgia sun? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we always have, you know, the guys that like to play around and have a good time. But, I mean, bottom, like, when we're at practice, it's all work. It's, and then, like Coach said, after practice, we're in the locker room. You know, we have a good time. We like to we like to have fun. So, it's uh, there's always a couple guys. So I hear you. What do you think are the ingredients for you, this team to try to walk away with the Gulf South Conference championship this season? Uh, first off, I'd probably say like, I mean, being a family, being together, because uh, you can't have a successful team if you're not a team at all. Um, Secondly, communication, like that's big for us on the O-line. So I think that's that's a big, uh, important goal for the whole team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would just say, like, just playing our butts off, really. Just <laughs> getting after it, trying our best, doing what we can. And like Coach said, take it one game at a time, and we take it one play at a time. So just keep moving forward. I hear you. Coach, when you look at it as far as coaching, this year you're going to have a new added wrinkle. You'll have instant replay. Yes. And how excited are you about having something like that? I'm excited about that because there were some instances last year, especially one game that it hurt us extremely bad, that we didn't have instant replay. And uh, I think it's going to be fun because, the, you know, 
I, the officials in our league are, are good officials, but they can't get everything exactly right. And that's, that's across the board everywhere, all the way up to the NFL. So in order to get some of those plays right, especially the targeting calls, I think that's very going to be very important because I hate taking a guy out of a game. You know, they – they don't have very many in their career. If you if you look at it from a West Georgia standpoint, they have 40 games guaranteed in their career, and they lose one because of a, you know, maybe a judgment call that may have gone the wrong way. So to be able to change those targeting calls, I think is going to be exciting. But I think it's something that our guys will enjoy, uh, and and I think the way that they've got it set up, it's not going to slow the game down, and it's not going to be something that the fans have to sit around and go, oh my gosh, here's another. Here's another replay. Do you have to really think about when you want to use oh, that yeah. one, when you want to throw that red flag? How are you going to think about that? And do you practice something like that as a coach? Well, we are. We're going to practice that. We practice every scenario all the way to overtime. You know, how do we handle overtime? How do we handle the coin flip? All those type things. Uh, you know, but for me, I think the biggest thing that I'm going to have to do is have these guys behind me all saying, throw your flag, throw your flag. You know, <laughs> I've got to make that decision and make it at the right time because you only have one. Mm-hmm. And if you uh, if if you win that, then you get a second one. So uh, but the, the biggest part of that throwing the red flag is the timeout. You lose those timeouts and those right. things are precious, especially at the end of the game when if, if you may be behind or whatever. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for me, uh, but we are, we're we're going to handle it uh, in a scrimmage and, and do it that way and, and kind of figure out how, how we're going to be able to uh, to manage that new part of the game. And it's, it's rare, Coach, that in a setting like this, we have a gotcha question that's positive. Right. But we do have a gotcha question. This morning I told you, you're two wins away from being the second winningest coach in Gulf South Conference history with your time at Valdosta State and also your time at West Georgia. How does that make you feel that you will be up there with the elite in this conference? Old. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's a credit to, number one, the, the players that I've had the opportunity to coach and be a part of. Uh, you know, we've we've been successful because of them, but then also the coaches that I've had an opportunity to coach with. It, it all goes down to what David said just a minute ago. It's it's that family. It's, you know, we can't win if we don't play together. And, and that's the one thing that we've been able – I've been able to do is surround myself with very good people, people that are winners, people that are successful – and I think that's one of the reasons that uh, I'm in the position that I'm in right now. All right, Coach, thank you so very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. And, David, good luck to you. Thank you. All right, the Wolves of West Georgia, Gulf South Conference, 2023 Media Day will continue right after this.